Can anybody tell me what event occurred in history when Nicholas Copernicus was roughly a freshman in college? You know. Yeah. <laughs> Can anybody tell me? In 1492, this was another thing that was going on at that time. The Spanish and the Portuguese advancements in navigation and shipbuilding allowed them to sail away from the shores of their country, not just locally, but you know, go around the tip of North Africa into the Indian Ocean and go on far expeditions and voyages to discover new lands. 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. His intent was to reach the Far East by going west. When he came back, they realized he discovered a continent that was not on any of the ancient um, geographies. And again, it's really hard. I, I didn't think that in his lifetime he ever discovered. In his lifetime, I don't think he ever knew that he discovered the Indies. He thought he discovered the Indies. When he came back, though, people realized he didn't. He had discovered a completely new continent that wasn't on any of the ancient geographies. And again, it's difficult for us today to realize just how profound this was. Again, put this in perspective. Imagine, if you will, dessert without chocolate. <laughs> Italian food without the tomato. No pizza, no pasta sauce. You've never heard of chewing gum. You've never heard of a canoe. You've never heard of a, chew, of a chili pepper. You've never used the term hurricane. And you've never attended a barbecue. And you've never had a steak dinner with a potato. No. All those things coffee. all those things came from the New World. Chocolate comes from Mexico. Chewing gum comes from a plant in Mexico. Tomato, Mexico. Potatoes, they come from Peru in South America. They weren't introduced into the European diet until a century later. Corn, all those things. And of course, barbecue comes from Memphis. So all those things <laughs> came from the New World. And they were unknowable before this event occurred. What else is there to eat? <laughs> they are staples of both the European diet and the American diet today. So the Europeans began to think, OK, when they discovered Aristotle, and Ptolemy, and it began to make its way back into European culture after being lost for a thousand years, they thought, this is it. This has got to be all knowledge. We have it right here. But when these kinds of events started to occur, it began to question and bother the European mind. Well, if Aristotle and Ptolemy didn't know about these things, then what else didn't they know? And again, when you start to question your assumptions, that's when learning occurs. Aristarchus' idea was ignored and derided in his time regarding heliocentric model. Copernicus, in many ways, came along at the right time. He hated the equant, this idea of uniform angular motion, because it violated the Aristotelian notion of uniform circular motion. And he wanted to get rid of it. Because not only um, it worked, the equant worked remarkably well as far as preserving appearances. Again. I just want to know what happens in the night sky and be able to predict when Mars goes retrograde. From that perspective, Ptolemy's system worked very, very well. So it preserved appearances very, very well. But it was complicated, it was messy, and according to Copernicus, it was not aesthetically pleasing. A good system, he quoted, must please the mind as well as preserve appearances. So his goal was to purge the system of the equant and, re and, and restore uniform circular motion to make it more aesthetically pleasing. In other words, he was trying to be Aristotelian. He was trying to go back, not forward. And as, as uh, history has it, he, he revived the heliocentric model of the universe by stumbling across a writing by Archimedes called the Sand Reckoner, where he mentions Aristarchus's heliocentric model, actually in a critical fashion. There are no, there are no works of Aristarchus that survived other than the one I just showed you. And most of what survives about Aristarchus was criticizing the idea. But Copernicus was introduced to the concept from Archimedes, the Sand Reckoner. And in 1514, he circulated a brief pamphlet to his friends and colleagues called a Commentariolus, basically outlining his ideas for a, a heliocentric model of the universe. Included in this pamphlet are his seven postulates. I'm not going to list them here. It's fascinating to look it up. 
Well, basically what it does, it, it's a brief outline of this heliocentric model of the universe. And it was never published in his lifetime. But here are the ideas. The sun, not the earth, is at the center of the universe. 